Good morning, Crossroads! Happy Sunday! It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's stand together if we can. We just love you today. It is going to be a great day. It is going to be an amazing day because we're together in the Lord's presence and we're here to seek Him. Amen. I was thinking, why do people go to church? And you know what? One reason is to seek the Lord. That should be the main reason. But it's also another way to publicly say, you know what? We're following Jesus. We're all here to hear from God and to listen to him and be encouraged. Amen. And know we're not alone. And you're not alone today. And some days I just feel like it's great to read scripture over you. And let me give you this scripture from Psalm 27. So you receive it today. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The psalmist says. And you can say amen if it resonates. Amen. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, and this only do I seek, and I pray this is you, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of our life. Amen. And while we're here, we're going to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to seek him today because he has great things for you. We're so blessed you're here today. We've been preparing this place before you got here, praying that everything you need, God will show you and fulfill. Amen. And so let's just welcome his presence as a body, can we, Jesus? This is your time. We're here. All of us are here because we're seeking after you. And we want to dwell and gaze at your beauty today. May you encourage every heart. You know there's a battle that every person here in this room is facing. But Lord, I remind them today of what you tell us, that you fight for us. And there are more for us than there are against us. So today, as the psalm, psalmist says, we will be confident today and put our trust in the Lord. Because you've never forsaken the righteous. And we're just honored to be your sons and daughters today. And all of God's children say, amen, amen. Well, let's get ready to enter in. It's a, so good to be together in the house of the Lord. We love you. God bless you today. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over. Rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest 
glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give him praise.
this morning. I couldn't sing that during rehearsal, but the Lord is good. God is good. Hallelujah. for it. 
know honor is due his name in the good and the bad times. And what I realize is the good and the bad are no different if you're in the kingdom. Everything's an opportunity to lift him up and give him praise. Every situation, every circumstance. There's times in our lives where we think that we've been forgotten when we think that we've been left to our own devices and nobody sees us. and <laughs> I had a discussion this morning and it started over a coffee cup and where I got that coffee cup from. And it reminded me of a time when I was sent off by the army to a place that I didn't know and I didn't have anybody around me and I was by myself. And, uh, you know, he made the comment of where I was and he said, you know, that was the winter time and he said, you know, it's, it's dark and it's rainy. And I said, yeah, I know. I felt all alone and it was dark. And I didn't know anybody. And, and it was uh, in Washington State and Mount Rainier's there. It's huge. And where I was stationed, it's so close to you. But it was so dark and so dreary that if you had told me it was there, I would not have believed you. I could not see that it was there with my eyes. And every thought that came to me about how I was left alone, and then one day after three weeks it cleared. And when I saw that mountain, it looked like it was close enough to touch. It was the most beautiful thing that I'd ever seen, and I thought, how could I have missed that? It was there this whole time. And I say that to you that when we're singing this, it's easy to sing this when people are around you and we're all one mind and one body and spirit. Here's this thing. When you are by yourself and you're all alone, you are still all of one mind, all of one body, and all of one spirit because of he that lives in you. There's times in your life when you have to speak to your soul and say, wake up. He's still there. And I've gotten to the point in my life that I don't have to see him because he lives in me. It's great when I see him in everything, but there's times I have to speak to my soul and wake him myself up and say, he's there. He's there. You may not be able to see him with your eyes right now, but he is there. You can touch him. You can taste him. You can feel him. He has been there the whole time. Don't let the enemy tell you he hasn't. So when I come to you this morning, some of you guys are saying, it's been awful in my life. I agree with you. I understand it's been awful. But the goodness of the Lord has been there the whole time. It's your opportunity to turn these ashes into beauty and to tell him, I see you, Jesus. You can take these circumstances. You can change them for my good. And I can declare the goodness of the Lord in this moment. So, Jesus, I thank you for every moment of our lives, not just the ones that we feel like are the good moments, but those that have been difficult. When I've had to wake myself and shake myself, and you've been good enough to sometimes be like you did with Peter and come and kick him in the side and say, get up, because the chains are off. I need you to walk out the open door. So, Jesus, I thank you that you're in the good and the bad. And you're the same in every season. And we trust you with those seasons. So if you're having difficulty today, it's okay. He's the same God in all seasons. And you can tell your soul, hey, wake up. Wake up. You can give him glory. You can sing. And something will shift today in the atmosphere. And I'm not just saying in this place. I'm saying in you. And you can be different today. So as we go on with the rest of the service, remember that he is good and he's good in all seasons. And you have the opportunity today to lift your voice and give him glory. So as we go on and worship, you may be seated and let's love him and let's praise him.
I mean, if we came for no other reason, just to tell them I am yours. Like, that's why we come, to tell them I'm yours. My heart is yours, God. It's the declaration that there's nothing that my heart longs for but you, Jesus. Everything else is, is just stuff. It's just materials. Even the people we love, they, they can't take the place of you. And it's, it's rehearsal. It's rehearsal. These gatherings are like rehearsals for the day that we see Jesus and we'll be singing this to him. With joy because we gave our heart to him before we could see him. Amen. We gave our lives to him before we could really see him with our own eyes. So we bless you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. You don't need a song to praise him, do you? Just tell him, I am yours, Jesus. I am yours, Jesus. I belong to you, Jesus. our praise today, Lord, for you are worthy of it, Lord. Amen. You are worthy of it, Jesus. Amen. Like Darren said, you're worthy of it when we can see you, and we're worthy. you're worthy when we can. You're worthy in the dark, and you're worthy in the light. You're worthy in the good, and you're worthy in the bad. Come on. Come on, let's all stand and just give him glory right now. Come on. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. 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 Thank you. As Darren was, was speaking about the mountain, Lord, I was reminded of what Lainey was saying on Monday night prayer. And she was saying that when we were, we're on the mountaintop and we're winning the battle, it's easy to find joy. It's easy to praise him. But it's where we're in the valleys, where it's harder, where there's, till, there's soil to be tilled, where there's we have to be watering and we have to be working, but that's where the growth is. And that's where we know we're not alone. So if you need to come up and lay those things down and sacrifice those things today, come up and lay them down because he's worthy of our praise because even on the mountaintops when we're winning, of course we know he's there, but it's in the valley when we're growing, when we're learning from those mistakes or those hard times, that's when we really see him show up. That's where we really see the growth. That's where we see the new things happen. That's the fruit. That's the fruit. Thank you, lady. That's the fruit. That's where the fruit is. Let's sing this to him. You're worthy of it all, Jesus. Come on. You're worthy of it all.
today. Come on, let's just thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory today. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Everything inside of us just shouts praise to you, O oh God, for your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for all that you're going to do in this service in our lives. Just thank you for everything that's going to happen. God, for your glory, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Turn to someone and tell them I love you and I need you. Just let them know you love them. Amen. Can we give a hand for the worship team? Our leaders up front here, they bless us every week. Amen. Good morning again. We're so glad you're here. How many of you know that you being here is divinely appointed, right? It's not by chance you're here for an appointment today, and we pray that you have felt the presence of the Lord. We are so glad you're here. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we are really glad that you are here. We want to welcome you. Can we put our hands together? After the service, Pastor Ben, would you stand up? Pastor Ben will meet you out in the foyer if this is your first Sunday here. And we have a gift for you. We just want you to know you're loved. And so thank you for being here. We also want you to know that um, today you can give your tithes, your offerings, your first fruits. How many of you know that's biblical? Amen. We're sowing into the eternal things of Christ. And so on your way out, there is an offering box. COVID, we can thank COVID for that, right? The plate's kind of got bigger. It's a box now. So it's back in the back. You can sew there and also next to it are prayer cards. If you have a need, write it down and we're going to pray over your need this week. And we know God is faithful. Well, Wednesday night is prayer meeting. It has been and will be as long as we can continue to gather. Amen. Seven o'clock. Be a part of it. It is kind of like your midweek. Uh, just fill up time. And it's beautiful, and every week God is doing something new. So we want you to be a part of that on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, Pastor D, would you stand up, Pastor D? Wave your hands. There she is in the corner. Next Sunday, Pastor D will be hosting altar workers training. You know, we are maybe a rare church, maybe. A lot of churches have taken away their altars. I don't know if you know that. We just say that is where my husband and I surrendered everything and they are they are nothing in and of themselves. It's just symbolic that people can come and just kneel and leave their burdens and their sins at the altar of the Lord. Amen. And ask for his strength and his peace. And when anybody comes up here, it takes such a big step of faith. We never want them to feel alone. So if you have a gift and you want to use that for the kingdom and to help lead others, there's going to be an altar workers training next Sunday um, directly after church. And you can sign up by using the QR code there. And if you don't know how to use a QR code, see Pastor D. She is your QR code, all right? You see her, she'll get you in. So we want to have lunch for you next week. So be sure to let her know you're going to be there. And finally, after service today, when pastor's done and we said, you are dismissed, it's not over. If you need to wait in the presence of the Lord, we have pre prepared a place for you. We continue to praise and worship him. And there are people that want to talk with you and pray with you. So just come forward. We invite you to come and hang out after the service if you need extra prayer. I sometimes just do it because I just don't want to leave his presence in such a special way. So we hope you'll take part of that. We're again, we're thankful you're here. Today um, we have about 10 to 12 families taking their kids to college. And I thought about what advice I could give them. I've been texting some moms and I... My best advice is, mom and dad, you just got to cry it out, right? Because there's really no words to say when you send your loved ones off to college and your kiddos. But we know God is there preparing a place for them. Amen. 
and is going to use it. So keep our families in your prayer and our college students. It's going to be the best year ever. It is, I promise. Um, and God will get us through the sad time, right? So prepare your heart today. Get your Bibles out. Let's welcome Pastor and the Word. There you are. We're so glad you're here today. It's good to be here, honey. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, um, I I think that um, this is true, that um, uh, if you're you're here today, of course, but since you're here today, um, I believe our steps were ordered by the Lord, and I believe even if we were supposed to be somewhere else today, but we're here today, it's because God wanted us here. Now, I believe there's some willpower in it. I believe we have to will, we have to agree with God. We have to make a decision that says yes. But I actually also believe that sometimes it's like the river that just flows. Sometimes God just sweeps us into places that he wants us. And I don't think he transgresses our will, but I believe that he helps us a whole lot. And so I, I guess I just say that I don't believe anybody's here by accident today. I, I believe that, that if you're here, God really intended on you being here, even if your plan was to be somewhere else. He just wanted you here. And we're glad you are here. Amen. And, and God has something for you. I, I was preparing this week, and I, I, some of my first thoughts I wrote down, it, it was kind of weird. I, I wrote down, this isn't a sermon. That I didn't feel like what I was doing was um, going into a passage and teaching some kind of exegetical message today. I didn't feel like that. That happens. Or sometimes it's a topical message. I felt I've done that many times. Uh, but today, uh, as I was listening this week, I, I feel like there's just some messages or some words that I want to, to communicate to you that I believe are from the Lord that I believe for whatever reason, that's maybe why you're here today, is that they're, that God knew you needed to hear these things because they're true, I believe, and because he knows you need encouragement. I mean, that's actually the biggest reason why we're to be together in the word. Number one is to exhort. It's never, it's never to tear down. It's always to build up. Even if and God building us up, he convicts us, that's, that's okay, but it's always to edify the body. And I believe that God knows exactly what you need, and so I believe that the Lord doesn't really have a, a, a sermon. I even titled this message, uh, kind of a weird title, but it, it's what I'm sensing and hearing uh, from the Lord in this season. So that's what I'm going to share with you, what I'm sensing and hearing, and since they always want a message title, like just thinking, I don't know, it's just things I'm sensing and hearing from the Lord in this season. There it is. There's your title. And so we kind of started it on Wednesday night prayer meeting, um, that some things I'm sensing, because I'm seeing it, and I'm hearing it, is, I'm just going to give them to you. Number one, I, I'm, I'm witnessing, we are witnessing um, and it's something that I sense is happening right now is I believe we're witnessing an acceleration. I, I meant to underline that because I want you to see, I believe that we're witnessing an acceleration of souls being saved and prodigals being restored to the family of God. Some of you are sitting here that are a part of that message that God is Calling people home. God is restoring people. Some of you aren't, haven't been to Crossroads forever, but you're looking up here and you're like, what in the world is on this stage? Well, we, we had this on our stage for years and years. We, we have uh, Chris Harston uh, painted this or drew this and painted it, and it's the, it's the prodigal. Here's the father's hands. You can see him. Here's the father's hands reaching out for the prodigal who comes home. And, and then here's the prodigal uh, embracing the father. And 
probably the saddest part I'm going to tell you right now is, is that when we were doing the prayer conference, those 11 years of the awakening prayer conference, uh, when I invited people to come down and write the names of the people in their lives that were lost, that were prodigals, that had fallen away, um, 4,500 names got put on here. They're on the side down here. They're, they're everywhere. Some of your names are on here. And um, here's the scary part. We have two of these. Exactly the same. And so there's 4,500 names on the other one. How do you know there's 4,500 names? There was a lady crazy enough to count them. <laughs> she, she counted every name. And she wrote, she wrote down the names. And we started praying for these names for years. There's an Abby up here. There's a Melanie. Um, there's a Hudson. Randy. And... My, 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 my dad put my cousin's name on here, and then he also put his brother's name on here, um, who he led to the Lord right before he passed away. Amen. So that's pretty cool. Someone put their whole youth group down, so I figure maybe they thought their whole youth group was lost, but... So, so what we're sensing, and I wanted to put this up. We have this down in the prayer room. We haven't seen this in years if you haven't been in the prayer room. But just to, just this is, there's, there are people on this portrait, the names that are coming home right now. Yeah. Right? There's a name on here. I just can't find it. But, but I'll tell you about them in just a minute. Um, I don't like to say anything that I can't ground in the word. I don't think that's, that's very safe. But in Amos chapter 9, verse 11, and you can see it up here on the, in the New King James, on that day, this is a prophecy of Amos 9-11. Uh, interesting, 9-11, I just caught that. 9-1-1. Um, what we've been doing here since 2019 is this restoration of the tabernacle of David, the tent of David. He says, on that day, I'll raise up the tabernacle of David. You know what the tabernacle of David was? It was a tent with an ark in it with no veil, and it was 24-7 worship and prayer in that tent. During David's reign, there was no veil. There was just worship and prayer in the, where the ark was. Every, every priest, every worshiper could be in there, not just the high priest. Crazy time. And, and the prophecy is, is that will be restored. David's fallen tent will be repaired. Its damages will be repaired. He says, I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. And we don't have time to go into the details of it, but that's actually happening all over the earth right now. There are churches that are shifting focus from just preaching centered to prayer and worship. And it's going on morning, noon, and night, sometimes through the night. And this is happening in the earth right now. But look at the next two verses down. This is one of the fruits of the tabernacle of David being restored or just intense worship and prayer in the church. Is the time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Then the terraced vineyards on the hills of Israel will drip with sweet wine. Some translations, the, the, the one who is uh, planting will be overtaken by the one who's sowing. And, and what that means is, is that, a prophes that this is prophesying a time when all of a sudden there will be this incredible acceleration of people coming into the kingdom of God. Now, context, this is Israel. So Israel will have this encounter with Jesus according to this passage. But it also means the nation. So that's you and I. And so this is, this is promise that we're going to see an acceleration. Let's go back to the point. An acceleration of lost people, prodigals, being restored to the family of God. Um, go, go to Revelation 7, because it's not going to be up on the screen. And, and, and let, me, let me let you see this for a minute. I believe we're witnessing this right now. And I'm, I'm going to tell you a couple stories to encourage you. That we're seeing loved ones, people that we've been praying for, people that have 
literally cursed at you and said, quit praying for me. No, I don't want to, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. And just smile at them and just go, we'll see. We'll see. Because the Lord's doing it right now. I want you to hear this, guys. The Lord is accelerating his mercy and grace, his kindness, his conviction. And people are awake, becoming awake to the things of God. Check this out in 7-9, Revelation 7-9. It says, As the, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude. Are you there? Yes. That no one could count. And this is not Jews. There's a part where the Jewish part of that is there. But every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. And they're wearing white robes. That's a good thing. That's what they would do when they would get saved in the first century. They'd put a white robe on and get baptized. And now they're wearing white robes and they're holding palm branches in their hands. And they're crying out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I mean, who better to talk about salvation than people who are saved? They cry out, salvation belongs to our God in white robes. Great multitude. All the angels, verse 11, were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. That's how we say amen in the church. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. amen. Praise and glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, and strength. Then one of the elders, verse 13, asked me, John saw this, asked him, these in white robes, who are they? Where, where are these multitudes in white robes? Where do they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who've come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Amen. Now, what are you reading? In a time of great pressure that's coming called Great Tribulation, this scripture points to the reality that there is a massive movement on the earth where people come to faith in the hardest time. They come to faith. They wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Amen? So here's a passage that points to who is this great multitude? They're the folks that in the great tribulation, when everyone was falling away, there was this massive multitude who came to faith in Jesus. And look at what they say in verse 15. They are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them. And we, are, we can appreciate that here in Texas. Nor any scorching heat for the lamb. Look at this. I love this. The lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Come on. And so I witnessed that this last week. Last Wednesday, not this past Wednesday, but the week before, I woke up. Wednesday is kind of the longer day here because we have the 8 a.m. prayer, we have noon prayer, and then we have the evening prayer meeting. And I woke up to this message from a couple that I haven't heard from in a long time. They went to my dad's church in Nashville, Tennessee, and the message, a bit confusing at first, but they're from Missouri, and... Um, the message was essentially that they got up in the middle of the night. They're a little bit older than me. And they drove all through the night to be with their son who lives over here east of Dallas in Greenville. Um, his name is Brett. And they came to be with him. The, the weight of his sin. He's been away from the Lord for a long time. And by now that there's a direct correlation between your praying and God's activity and movement. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's people who keep praying for these names. Yeah. Um, that Wednesday before all this happened, Kirby, who does our social media and who does our, our um, uh, office, all the office stuff in our church, 
we were in the in the prayer room, and she's she's mighty. She she sings up here on the stage, and she's not afraid. But man, that Wednesday before any of this happened, she came and took the mic and just started weeping and crying out for prodigals, yeah. listing them by name. Now she had no clue about Brett, but but she was praying out names of people that burdened her. And then that night at prayer meeting, it slipped over into our prayer meeting, and we began to really cry out. I, I believe that there's no doubt that there, the timing of us crying out that week before for God to move in the lives of prodigals and Brett coming the next week, there's no doubt there's a direct correlation between us crying out and God moving in his life, guys. Come on. Don't stop praying for your prodigal. Don't stop crying out. That Timothy passage says that he urges us to lift up petitions, prayers, intercession, because God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So um, when my, I, I didn't tell you the whole story, uh, told it Wednesday night, some of it, but here's the neat thing. I'm baptizing Brett that Sunday and his father just came up to me and told me, oh, by the way, your dad dedicated Brett as a child. God, you can't make this stuff up, guys. God is, is working in our lives. He's working in our midst. Amen? So when my dad pastored at Grace Church, we had a worship pastor, and his kids and my brothers all got in the same van every, every morning to go to school. And... Um, it was a van that had one back seat for all of us. So we all sat in the floor. We didn't use seat belts back then. We were, we were smarter people back then, I guess. No, totally illegal probably even then. But we, that's how we got to school every, every, every day. We all just piled in this old green van with only one back seat. And, so, um, and the oldest of that group was my, this uh, worship pastor's daughter. Her name is Kelly. And um, I could tell as, as a junior hire, she'd have been almost out of high school. I could tell that that girl was drifting from God, even though I myself was drifting from God. I knew she was. And it wasn't long after she got out of high school that she just <clears throat> went off and almost like a prodigal, just, just left everything. And tried to move as far away from everything as she could. And she was in a very dark life. Um, uh, kind of a new age kind of thing. And, and then because, you know, whatever we try to fill ourselves that is never filling. Uh, she found, I believe she became addicted to alcohol and everything else. And so... Um, I've been praying for her. Her name is on here too, and I, I can't, I haven't found it yet. But um, we ran into her parents at one of the general assemblies that we go to in Indianapolis, and I remember 15 years ago or more just asking her if there was anything changed, and with tears in the mother's eyes, she was like, "No, I just can't talk about anything about God." She she just she becomes so hard and. So difficult, and so um, it's those kind of things that make you really want to quit praying, yeah. or quit believing, or, or get hurt. She even described to me that if anything ever came up about church or the Lord, it was an instant hang up, yeah. and and then not talk for long periods of time. And so um, I I started looking back um, on this private message that I was in with the mother. And about 2020, in the pandemic, she started talking to me, the mother did, about her daughter Kelly, how things were changing. There was like an openness. There was, there was communication now, and there wasn't any problem. In fact, she would initiate conversations about the Lord. 
And another, about six months ago, she reached out to me and said that Kelly has moved home and now she's living in Tennessee and, and right near um, where her sister is. And, and there was another set of things that were said that was just like, wow, this is not like Kelly. I just got a message this last week and she said, I know I haven't talked to you in a long time, but I just got to tell you, Kelly is saved. She's on fire. She's like in the word. She will talk our ears off about the Bible and about being discipled. And she's getting baptized in a few weeks. Look at this passage. Second Peter. So somewhere her name's on here. And I want to somehow get that name over here. Because this is what we do. Brett, when he comes back next week, I'm going to have Brett put his name on here. Because I want Brett to be able to testify to what Jesus has done in him. But in 2 Peter 3, 9, look at why this is happening. I want you to know why this is happening. The Lord's not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Isn't that true? He's patient, he's patient with you. He's patient with everyone on that portrait. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Look at that word for just a minute, everyone. And let me just ask you to look at that word. Who is everyone to you? Who is that everyone to you? There's, that's, that's a big word, everyone. But who is that specifically to you? There's a name in that everyone, isn't there? There are people that are in that everyone that belong to you. And I want you to know this. If he's... He's slow in keeping his promises. It's not real slowness. He is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to a knowledge of the truth. Let me look you in the eye. Let me tell you something. If you think your prodigal can't be saved, you don't know Kelly. And so let's quit worrying about how lost the lostness of our people are and not talk about how big God is and how powerful he is to save and get enamored by his mercy and his kindness and not the hardness that we're seeing in people or the lack of desire or whatever it is. Just know he's being patient. So that's the first thing I'm witnessing. And so I believe we're going to witness more seats. Like last week, there wasn't hardly a seat available with all the baptism people and so many people that brought lost people to see them get baptized. I got a feeling in my heart they may be back <laughs> to get baptized themselves pretty soon. And, and so I actually believe that we're seeing an acceleration of people coming home to Jesus. I'll tell you the second thing that I'm, I'm sensing in my spirit is... I believe we are witnessing an intensification of faith in Jesus and love for each other in the church. I want you to turn with me to 2 Thessalonians. I want you to go there, but just keep that point on there for a second. I, I, I believe we, I am witnessing this in this church, so I can only go on what I see here, but I'm witnessing this intensifying. We, we saw it last week. Um, in this group of kids on the stage, there's a, how many witnessed a faith in these kids that is, that you saw, that's real. You can see, like, they're not going to walk away from that. That, there's a realness to that faith. And I believe it's actually intensifying. I sense that faith is intensifying in Jesus, but I believe it's intensifying in love for each other. And look at Second Thessalonians 1 verse 3. Um, Paul is talking to a church that will very much resemble the, the end time church in America. I really believe this. We ought always to thank God for you. Look at what, what Paul thanks God for in this church in Thessalonica. Brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more and the love all of you have for each other is increasing. Notice the words. Faith is growing and love is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance in the faith in all the persecutions and trials 
you are enduring. Like, I, I really believe, guys, that something is intensifying. Hear, hear me on this, though. Because if we actually, if the American church actually started experiencing any kind of real pressure, or even, might I say, dare I say, persecution, half of the churches would be emptied. Because if it's too hard to get here now with no pressure, can you imagine if there's any kind of pressure put on you, if, if you can't serve them in the easy time? then how can you serve them when it gets hard? And so I actually believe that there's an intensification. There's a growing. Like, just, you can just look at that verse for just a second. I underline parts of it, but I actually believe that, that the days of unhealthy churches, churches that were very unhealthy, selfish, um, God's pruning the church. He's pruning the bride. Even if it means he has to close some of them. Because they never really became healthy or holy. There, there was a lot of sin and dissension and he just closes them. Or pastors who just aren't living it right from what they're preaching. They just, he prunes the pastors. And, and people fall away for a little bit. Um, I believe that all of that is actually a part of God's plan to, to that, 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 that when, when you go into a church, it, 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 there's not going to be a fake element to it. It's, it's just going to be the real deal people who are growing and increasing and persevering. There's a maturing coming to the church. You know what I'm talking about? This, this When it says faith is growing more and more, you know what that means? It means that that when you say, hey, let's go to Revelation, that wasn't the first time you turned to your Bible that week. That, that you've, that to, to grow in your faith means that, that the Bible becomes so much more important to you than really any other thing in your life. And, and, you, and when the pastor says, hey, turn to Thessalonians, you start, I start hearing more stuff like this. Man, that's crazy you said turn to Thessalonians. I've been in Thessalonians all week. Because you're growing in your faith, and God's putting us all on the same page. Amen. That's why the prayer room is so important, because we're in the same passages through the week, and we're growing in maturity and growing in faith. And I believe that in that process, people become more stable and sure and certain in their faith. And so I actually believe we're witnessing a time that's going to be a little painful, pruning. I've been talking about that a lot. Like, we're so-and-so. We're so-and-so. And I would just say, he's pruning them. If we don't see him for a while, he's, he's getting them down to where they really need him. And I believe that we're going to see less emotionalism, less fickleness in the church, um, less erraticness in and out, up and down, less pettiness. Because when you dial into Jesus and you start focusing on him, you can let go of a lot of stuff. Amen. Amen. Come on. And, and so I, I really believe that, that that's what we're witnessing. And, and when it says the, the love uh, that all of you have for each other is increasing, I believe that that's taking place. It's like stuff that might cause a fissure in a relationship doesn't anymore because you're ready to forgive them. You're ready to work a relationship out rather than toss the relationship. Amen? You're, not much of yourself is involved anymore because you've been crucified with Christ and you no longer live, but now Christ lives in you. Amen? I, I never understood how churches could split or have a bunch of this and that if we actually lived out Jesus' forgiveness from the cross. There would just be a reconciling spirit in all of us. And so I really believe that, that there's just going to be less offense and a lot more forgiveness. Um, I believe the church is becoming the wise virgin. Instead of the foolish virgins. Um, real quick story. It's on the screen, but it's in Matthew. But 
Jesus tells a parable of ten virgins that went out to meet the bridegroom. I just want you to see this part. The wise ones, it says, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. And I actually believe that's the same thing as Second Thessalonians, that the faith is, is, is growing more and more. I believe that, that this, this picture of the end time church is, is that, listen, we have our light burning for Jesus, but we have plenty of oil for if, if it goes a long time before he comes or if it gets much darker. We're never going to worry about our light going out because we have plenty of oil. Okay, what are you talking about plenty of oil? I believe the oil represents that we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We, we, we're, we're, we're exuding the word. It's not just something that we've heard, but now it's in us. It's living and it's active and it's inside of us. And, and so if, the, if, if Jesus delays and if it gets really dark and the pressure comes, our light won't go out because we have so much reserve. And you know what comforts me more than anything else about this passage is it says, look, the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. The foolish virgins that didn't have enough oil, they fell asleep. But guess what? The on-fire, spirit-filled people get tired too. And, and so that, that gives me comfort that even when we get t tired and weary, we still have enough in supply. That if we kind of doze off and we, we're not as fervent in prayer at some point that when the trump sounds we're like but I'm ready I've got plenty in reserve and, and the rest of it is is that when they woke up the cry came out at the, at the midnight cry the, here's the bridegroom come out to meet him then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps the foolish one said to the wise give us some of your oil our lamps are going out and look at this isn't mean this isn't mean. This isn't lacking compassion. Look what the wise virgins say. No, no, there may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. You know basically what that saying is? I can't give someone else my relationship with Jesus. I can't give them my reserves. You have to get them yourself. And so while they were on their way to buy oil, the virgins who were ready went in to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you don't know the day or the hour. Church, them are church folks. Church folks who had the same opportunities to you to open your Bible, but they didn't open it. To get in the work, but they didn't get in it. To come to the altar and be filled, but they didn't get filled. And when that day comes, there's not enough. There's not enough to supply, to keep their, their light, their spiritual light burning. And so I believe the, light, the end time church people are going to have their, light, their lamp lit, but plenty of reserve no matter how long the delay or how dark it is. Come on, somebody. In fact... Um, I'm going to put up a very strange passage before we go to the last point, Malachi 3.16. I believe we're going to watch in these days the, this prophecy being fulfilled. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard, and a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those, look, those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as the father has compassion and spares his son who serves him. And then I, this line, I can't get over it because I believe it will be for our time. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. And I just want to say, I believe we're entering a time when the people in the body of Christ There'll be a clearly clear distinction between those who serve the Lord and those who don't serve the Lord. Right now, to be honest with you, everybody's a Christian, especially in Texas. Maybe up not northeast, but in Texas, everybody's a Christian, but not everybody knows Jesus. 
not everyone has a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And I got news for you. It's, it's those who say, Lord, Lord, that he goes, I don't know you. And, and so I really believe that in the last days, there won't be like a big bunch of gray area. They'll just be on fire people for Jesus and then a cold, dark world. Yeah. And so I believe we're going to see that day. So I believe we're going to see an acceleration of people who are just like, all of a sudden, they desire faith. They want to know Jesus. They want to talk about Jesus. There's conviction. They feel conviction. They may feel that their time is short, that the Holy Spirit is dealing with their heart, but they know they can't keep putting Jesus off. Amen? It's time to get all the way in. I believe we're seeing that time come. I believe we're also seeing a time when the church is actually becoming who the church was meant to be. She's, she's becoming full of faith and full of love, and it's increasing. And this is the third thing. And I want you to stay in 2 Thessalonians. I believe we're going to witness the time. Um, you keep hearing me say this, and you're like, why does he keep saying this? Because I feel like I have to keep saying it. I believe we're witnessing a time of great spiritual deception. Where people delight in their sinful identities and defiantly refuse to love the truth. Yeah. We're going to see that too. And that's going to be hard. Um, I, people in this up, upstairs, don't put this verse up until you go to this verse. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. I want you to go there first. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 through 12. Because I want you to see it in your own Bible. I actually believe that we're entering a time that we're going to be like, I can't believe. I think we're already there. Because people are calling good evil and evil good. And I believe that we're, we're sitting here going, I can't believe people think like that. I can't believe they think that's right. Or I can't believe that they think what's right is actually wrong. And, um, and so it's troublesome to us. This verse troubles me more than most. And verse 9 of, of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, The coming of the lawless one. Now you can put it up. It's the Antichrist. I'm talking about the Antichrist. Will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. In all the ways that wicked, wickedness deceives. All wickedness is, is things contrary to God's word, according to scripture, is wicked. Sounds like a bad word. Wicked sounds like a wicked word. Because it is wicked. It's, it's against the word of God. But look what wickedness does. Look at what it does. It deceives. If something in my Bible tells me that's wrong or that's right, and I do the opposite, my actions by doing that deceive me. And it says here, those who are perishing, they perish because, and I want you to see this verse, they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Now that verse scares me because you know what that means? They heard it. You can't refuse something that you've not heard. So believers inside the church and outside the church, unbelievers, here comes the truth. And they look at it and they refuse to love it. They refuse to believe it. They, so it's not just like an accident. There's a rebellion there. There's a complete no, no. In fact, I've been told by people here that people in your family tell you, that literally will tell, um, uh, no, this behavior is okay, even though the word is clearly saying that it's not okay. And I will tell you that what's going on there is they're refusing to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so, they will, so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. And so I don't understand all this, to be honest with you. I don't know what the delusion is that, 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 that people are given over to, but I believe this. 
It says that Satan empowers the Antichrist with signs and wonders and miracles, just like God gave Jesus signs and wonders and miracles. I believe we'll see a merger of politics and religion. And people won't know the difference, really. And they'll be seduced. And it's, here's the people that make it. The people who love the truth and won't compromise the truth now, when everything gets deceiving, will be like, no, that's just not true. I, I, I can tell you what's true and what's not true. We're living in a world that cannot tell you what's true and what's not true anymore. And so then the Bible says the Lord gives them over to a powerful delusion. So, you mean God caused this? No. People refused to love the truth. And so he gave them over. And so, why do I tell you that? Because one of my main prayers for prodigals right now is based on this verse. Lord, I cry out to you, put a love in them for the truth. If the end day people refuse to love the truth, then I'm crying out, God, I bind the truth to their hearts. I bind the truth to their minds. God, may they fall in love with your truth. Even if it means they lose everything to gain you, may they do that, Jesus. Amen? I want our worship team to come up or whoever wants to come up. So I believe we're in the days of Noah. Everybody's going on with life as normal, right? And then this sudden thing takes place. This sudden, it talks about a sudden disaster takes place. Well, I want us to be a people who are ready. Amen? Amen. That our spiritual fire is burning. And so here, listen, listen to me. You have heard the word of the Lord today. I believe this is the season we're in. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's give him praise. Let's give Jesus praise. You have heard his word today. Come on, can we thank him for the acceleration of souls? Come on. Let's just receive the word today. God, we praise you for the people that are coming to faith. Amen. Thank you for the people that are coming to faith in you, Jesus. Thank you for the prodigals that are under conviction today. And they're coming home to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How about yourself today? Can you thank him that today your faith is growing more and more? That the love you feel for each other in the body of Christ is increasing. Thank you, Lord. That you're making a bride that's pure and holy and made ready and not petty and not... Not full of unforgiveness and hurt and resentment, but, but, but loves like you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God, that you're pruning your bride. You're purifying your bride and you're making her ready for your coming, Jesus. So we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. And Jesus, our hearts are burdened today. We know that, God, this great deception is coming and it's we can almost feel an urgency that people need to know the truth now because a time will come when everything is so confusing church people are going to end up not believing like not even they're going to despise jesus they're going to have this 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 like this hatred toward jesus and so jesus we pray we pray for people that we love we pray for this community jesus Cause a great awakening today. Cause a hunger and thirst, Jesus. Cause a longing for truth. Yeah. I asked the Lord, like, Lord, how do you want us to, to close? And I didn't really hear a lot. I just I think I just heard the Lord say, let's just pray. And so today, if there's a prodigal, if there's someone that you're standing for and you just want Jesus to give you fresh hope that he that what he did in Brett what he did in Kelly he's doing right now for your prodigal and you just want to come and say Jesus I stand one more time for them come and stand for them come and 
press in for them. Come and pray for them. Listen. If you just want to pray and say, Lord, help my faith to grow more and more. Come and pray. Come and pray. Just, Jesus, I want my faith and my love to increase. I want, I want, I don't want to have nominality in my faith. I want to, I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to increase in love. I want to increase in faith. Just come in. I want to pray for people that you may say, you know what? I need to get right with Jesus today. I need to surrender my life to Jesus today. I'm not promised tomorrow. The Bible says we're not promised tomorrow. We we face the judgment once. And if you today just say, you know what? I'm in this service and I need Jesus. I need to really confess my faith in him. I really need to turn my life over to him. Then just come. Like this acceleration could happen today for you. Amen. Amen. You could be all in today, saved today, and baptized next week even. God is still working right now in people to be saved. And so, Lord, if there are people that need to be saved here, may they not worry about anything but getting to this altar and getting their life right with you and surrendering everything to you, Jesus. Amen. So if you want to come pray, just come pray. For whatever reason, just come and press into Him. Come in to press into his heart. We're going to sing a song of praise to him. I just I just pray, Lord, send fresh fire today. Come on. Send fresh faith all across this auditorium, God. Awaken hearts today. May there be a fearlessness given to us. May we not be afraid of what it looks like to serve you, O oh God. May we not find ourselves always on the fence about you. May we get all the way in today, Jesus, and say to you today, Lord, I'm all in. I surrender all to you, Jesus. I'm not holding anything back from you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's sing to him. Thank you, Jesus. Coming back to just me and you. Just a heart song singing out of tune. and people that are outside the arc of, of safety right now. They're not in, they've not gotten on board. They're not in the ark before the door shuts. And I felt this to pray for this. God, would you remove, would you heal us of the hurt? I, I feel hurt. I feel there's hurt in this room from people that we've been praying for. That, we've been, that we love, but the rejection and the rejection and the rejection has caused hurt. And I pray, I pray for people who even put names on that portrait, but there's just a hurt hardness. Because when we get hurt enough, it hardens us. I pray today for the power of your Holy Spirit to melt the hurt, remove the, the barrier, the wall, the self-defense, the pride, the just the pain. I pray, move that, that rock of pain. Move that obstruction. Help us to feel love for them. Help us to feel love again, God, even after the rejection, even after the curses and the taunts and <laughs> all kinds of stuff that's been said that's not of you, Lord. 
we pray, God, help us to just think about eternity and how, how important it is that they spend eternity with you, Jesus. And Jesus, if you could take the jeers, if you could take the curses, if you could take the spittings on the cross, then help us to take them and, and, and give back what Jesus gave back. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Can we say that? Lord, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing, Jesus. Forgive them. And I pray, Jesus, that your kindness would lead them to repentance. Amen. Pray that. Accelerate it today, God. May your Holy Spirit, God, I, I am blown away by Kelly, God. If you could do it in her, you can do it in anybody, Jesus, as far away as she was. You can do it, Jesus. So, Lord, go to the Kellys of our life, Jesus. Go to the people that just seem beyond your reach. May we be reminded of Isaiah 59 that says, Your arm is not too short to save. So we pray today. Can we pray this for them one more time? Save them, God. Rescue them. Deliver them. Draw them into your arms, oh God. <laughs> Bind the enemy. Silence his lies in their life, Jesus, and open their heart to you, God. And may we see this multitude, God, may we see this multitude someday who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Worshiping you, Jesus. Loving you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing it. Let's keep singing. Let's keep praising him. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's all about, all about you, all about you. And it's all about, all about you, all about you. And it's all about, all about you, all about you. And it's all about, all about you, all about you. And it's all about you. And lay your hand on that person next to you, Lord. We pray that in this season, I have an urgency in my heart, God, for people that I, I heard this week that if, if, if we can't get it right in this season, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. So I pray that people who've been constantly up and down spiritually, they've been in and out spiritually, Lord, today we pray, stabilize your people in the truth. We pray, God, for breakthrough that brings us to the cross where we quit fighting you and fighting our flesh, but we truly die to ourselves and live by your spirit and live by your power. So we lay hands and pray. God, we pray for fresh faith, fresh fire, fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon your people here today, Jesus. Just, God, we pray for increase. We pray... Remove any, any barrier in us to your word, to, to loving you, to serving you, God. If there's any sin in our lives, we just pray, God, remove it, God. Remove it from our lives, Jesus. I pray this today. And Jesus, we pray for people that we love. May they fall in love with the truth. We pray this, God, as we, may we fall in love with the truth and may they fall in love with the truth. And I pray, I pray for someone here today that doesn't know you. May today be the day that they say, Jesus, I turn to you. I repent of my sins. I surrender my life to you. It's no longer me who lives, but I want you to live in me, Jesus. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. I will not be ashamed of you, Jesus. Save me today, I pray. I pray for someone who's praying that today. May today be their new birthday, God. Their new birthday in you, Jesus. Come on, let's bless his name. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, someone. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord. 
We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. And may we watch you work this week. May we watch you work around us. May we watch you work in us. May we watch more people putting their names on this restored portrait, Lord. May we see your kingdom come like never before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen, if you need to go, go in his presence, go in his power.